predictions time, baby. It is prediction time. We are going to give you our Premier League table predictions. This is the kind of content I like to see. What people thinking, who they're thinking doing well. Who yeah, this doing is what shit. You're, this this is yeah, what, this when is... you're excited on the eve of the Premier League, this is the one to go for. Um, we've got some very different tables towards the middle. Yeah, but, well, um, I'm excited for us to run you through what we think here and there. Yeah, so we'll just get straight into it. Number 20, Roz, who have you gone for? We can you like simultaneously say Bournemouth. Bournemouth, number 20, 20th position. Yeah, Scott Parker will it's be gone. It's not the one. And yeah, is there much to say? They haven't nah, really added. Transfer window's been shit. Scott Parker's come out and said that his squad at this current moment in time is depleted. So for me... If they start the season ropey, they're going to be fucking on zero points when every other team's like 20 points clear of them. I mean, you're going so, to get to January and who's going to want to join a relegation fight? You know so what I mean? I think it's it's looking bleak for Bournemouth. Yeah. I and think, if um, I'm honest, yeah. I can't... Not fast if they get relegated. Yeah. Number 20, Bournemouth. Yep. Nice See you later, mate. We're going to burn through these. It's going to be a, qu- a quickie one. But um, number 18... We've both got the other promoted 19, team. Sorry. Yeah. Fulham. Yeah. Fulham. Yeah. Um... They're Do just they're- like the renowned yo-yo club, aren't they? And I don't think this season will be any different. Yeah, I mean, I think even if Mitrovic has his best season in the Premier League, it won't be it's enough. Not- they've made a couple of good signings, Pereira and um, Palina, but for me, their squad's just not up to scratch. And I don't actually think Marco Silva is a good enough manager. I don't know. He's um, he's just a bit of a strange one because he, he has a he's quite highly thought of, but... He strikes me as a manager that can play in a team that's dominant in that league, but not cut out for the the grit and the heart of a relegation battle. Yeah, potentially. Uh, and that's why we have them in number 19. In 18th place, Last our first relegation spot. Yes. And this is where, oh yeah, like you said, our first spot where we got different options. I'll let you go first. I've gone... Because yours and, is slightly less controversial than mine. And it is with a heavy heart because I want them to do well. But I think Nottingham Forest will be the final relegation spot. However, I do believe it will go down to the wire. I, I can see that it being a final day thing. I just, I think Steve Cooper is a great manager. And I yeah. think they're going to play some great football throughout the season. But I don't know if they'll be able to play the football that they play in the championship in the Premier League. And I don't think the players they brought in are going to be enough to keep them up. I think they've made some great signings. Yeah. But a lot of signings for the future almost. I can almost see this as a project where, okay, we go down, we invest again. Yeah, we we'll go again. And our players have another year of experience when we come back up to the Premier League. You know, they're they're a year older, a year wiser yeah. and, and better. Well, and throughout that time, they can see their weaknesses and what they need to improve on. But it's like, can they keep the likes of... Brennan uh, Johnson. Of Brennan Johnson, players like that, you yeah. know. Um, but obviously, they spent a lot of money on uh, Jesse Lingard in terms of his wages anyway. But he's only there. Is it a year contract? A year contract, Sorry. yeah. So, I mean, you know, I think they'll claim a few scouts this season. I wouldn't be surprised if they they actually did finish higher than 18th and they may be pushing towards a mid-table spot because if it does click, it will click and it will do well. But um, for me, yeah, 18th, 18. unfortunately. Well, what you said that was interesting for me is when you said it would go down to the wire because without spoiling your 17th position spot, the team you've got in 17th... Is actually the team I've got to go down in 18th. Without spoiling your 17th position sport, and you just go and say it. Everton! Everton! Fuck them, man. <laughs> They're going down in Ross's prediction. They Ross are has indeed. Them in 18th place. Why do you have and Everton? And you've got them in a close 17th spot. I do, yeah. So we both think they're going to struggle this year. I think they're going to struggle just too much that they're going to lose their place in the Premier League. I think for me, similar to Fulham and Bournemouth, they've had one of the weakest transfer windows in the league their squad is not up to scratch you've got a lot of players in that team the likes of Deli Alley the likes of Calvert-Lewin Calvert-Lewin now that I think are just there Gilfie Sigerson Michael Keane Earth Gilfie Sigerson Jesus Christ <laughs> but um, yeah a lot of players that I think are on big money kind of have this reputation that makes them in- get into the first team every week but just aren't good enough and what they're doing I think is taking away places from hungry players in their academies that could probably displace the likes of Jesse Lingard, Deli Alli, uh, not Jesse Lingard, Calvert-Lewin, um, Deli Alli, Michael Keane. I think you Michael got, Keane's uh, shit. Gordon, who's come through. Could like be a Gordon good a lot. I like Dwight Manil, you know. 
I know we were talking about his stats and how they're not that good, but I think maybe in a bit more of a progressive Frank Lampard team, they might be better. Yeah, and he's got but players around me, them. I mean, he's come from Burnley where, you know, it's very stank. much direct yeah. football. Um, and he was primarily played as a left midfielder, wasn't he? Or, yeah, sometimes yeah. even like left back. Yeah, Yeah. so I mean, so you've got them in, in relegation zone. I think they just haven't got enough to cut them. Cut the mustard. I've got them in 17th. Um, I very much agree with you. But I think they've got a bit more quality in their squad, regardless of the manager. I yeah. think a player like uh, Calvert Lewin, him on top four, you know, if he, player, if he can yeah. get goal scoring, you know, he'll be enough to keep him up. Yeah, yeah. Um, Pickford as well. Yeah, I think that. you can't look at, look uh, look past Jordan Pickford. You have brought in uh, Tarkowski, who is a very good defender. Mm. You know. I mean, I think they've got enough in that squad. Yeah, they've got a few game winners. I mean, if they can turn Deli Ali into into some sort of football player again, yeah, the play was like you know when Mourinho first turned up at Spurs, yeah, he was I mean, so good. But now his head seems to be gone. But yeah, and I think you know you've got Damari Gray, exciting player still. Uh, Andros Townsend, when he's back from injury, he, he's a game winner. You know, yeah. Abdoulaye Ducore. I think there is enough in that squad to keep him out of relegation. To be honest. Yeah, I think like we were saying, uh, like you said, it's going to be down to the wire. But for me, you're going to catch an L, I think. Yep. Um, 17th to for your me. 17th place, Ross. This is another bit of a controversial one. I'm going to have hella fan bases coming for my neck. I've got Aston Villa at 17th. For me, they've been on some kind... They're smoking something the past couple of seasons. They've been thinking they're bigger than they are pushing for Europa League and all this stuff. They've been nowhere near. And for me, what will happen is Gerard's going to have a run of bad games. His head is going to be on the chopping block and they're going to get in a shit manager like Sam Allardyce or Stevie Bruce. And I think they're going to be in trouble. They've invested so much money as well that if they don't cut it... Problems. Problems. And for me, yeah, I think they can get found out pretty easily if their players don't turn up. Yeah, um... I'm not going to say anything about that because I don't want to give away what I have on my list. Moving on to my 16th place, it is the bus stop in Hounslow. We got Brentford, Frank, what's his name? Thomas Frank. Thomas Frank. I was about to say Frank. Frank Thomas. Tom Frank was Lambert. Yeah. Uh, Thomas Frank's Brentford. Um, Yeah, I just think they started last season really well um, and then sort of petered off. Yeah really looked to struggle against just to, to be able to break down teams. Yeah. Um, and players with no like, Ericsson, it's going to be a bit of a yeah, struggle. That's, they haven't that's really replaced that. Point, Eric. yeah. Yeah. Ericsson came in sort of revitalised the team um, and they haven't really replaced him with anyone. I know uh, mm. De Silva is an like, exciting guy, but I don't think he's going to be enough. I think there'll be struggle. I think it'll be very close between Brentford, Everton and Forest for that Final yeah, relegation this spot. area of the like league table, we've got quite a lot of similar. It could like, be very, like, very one or two interchangeable. Spots. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, there's not much for me to say 16th, about them. I've got Nottingham Forest. I think they're going to be the only promoted team to stay up. I think, like we were saying about Steve Cooper, I think he plays a nice style of football. And out of the three promoted teams, they've had the best window. Yeah, I think if they finish Cooper the season can, the strongest out with three teams, if Cooper can get those new signings in, Nico Williams, I like that signing a lot. And I think if they can bed in quickly, I think Forrest will be okay. And I think it's not a case always of can they um, do well. It's can they do better. Are, are there teams that will do worse than them? And I think there are uh, three or four teams that will do worse than Forrest. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I see what you're saying. I just think in terms of Forrest, they lost a lot of their lone players in, in <coughs> yeah, Zinconago, they did. They Jed Spence. Uh, Garner, uh, Keenan Davis, yeah. who uh, were pivotal to them, uh, their promotion. Um, and although they've recruited well, that's a lot of movement in such as uh, like it was, this team would play week in week out with very few changes. Yeah. Um, so, and I mean, is Nico Williams an upgrade on Jed Spence? Probably not. You know, and but you That'd know, it's, it's going to be. Uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Anyway, 15th. 15th for me, I've gone with Leeds United. Jesse Marshall's re- reinvigorated Leeds United. You yeah, for me, if Bamford could stay fit and find some goal-scoring form, they could be a lot higher on this list. 
Um, there's just a lot of unknowns for me in this. Uh, Tyler there Adams, is, is Sinistera. Yeah. You know, um, a couple other boys as well they've signed. Um, yeah, yeah I, Aronson, I just, yeah. I, I, I'm finding it hard to put my finger down on Leeds. Um, so I've gone with 15th place. I might have gone slightly ambitious for Leeds, but I'll save that for a bit yeah, later. this is probably our biggest discrepancy. Yeah, in terms I was going to of... say that before I introduced 15th. I was yeah. like, that is probably the biggest one. Yeah. But I've got Brentford, who you had in 16th. I've got them in 15th. Not too much difference Yeah, there. I think they'll be just fine, but they won't kick on or move up the league. I think they'll be just too good for relegation, but you, how, how many points do you reckon between them and the bottom three? Maybe like five or six. Five or six. So it would go down pretty... Could be Yeah, I think close. all the say like twentieth to like fifteenth, sixteenth, I think all of those teams are pretty similar. Or like I feel like our fifteenth. I reckon if you get sort of like similar 14th, teams, yeah. you're looking at not a relegation yeah, battle. Yeah, yeah, I think so. And we'll uh, move on to fourteenth. I have gone for Steven Gerrard's Aston Villa. Who I had just a scrape out of relegation yeah I think they've got enough about them I think they've got a really good squad of players they've got too many good players to, to be drawn into feasibly relegation battle. be where I think they are yeah but I've gone for them as maybe my biggest upset of the season I upset think for them not me if you took um, Coutinho and put 10 blocks of wood around him he could probably scrape at 17th to earth I think I think you know and they've got a goalkeeper in Emmy Martinez who you know he's, he's a match winner himself yeah uh, Esri Konza, Luca Digne, they've got Matty Cash, they've got uh, Costa, Kamara, McGinn, John McGinn. John. Got uh, players like Bayou, who's had a great yeah. preseason, Buendia, Ings, Coutinho, Watkins. That's a stat squad. It really should be doing better than it is. So I've got them in 14th. I think they they will struggle, and it's whether it, uh, Stevie G's got enough tactical adeptness to be able yeah. to see them through certain games. But I think they'll pick up points along the way and I think they'll be pretty much safe coming towards the end of the season. I've got Southampton at 14th. Yeah. I think pretty much everything you said about Aston Villa, I could be the same for Southampton. Their squad is too good to be drawn into a relegation battle. Likes of Joe Aribo, Che Adams, Great Armstrong. Signing. You see the goal he scored? Lavia, yeah. Unbelievable. Oh, mate, I think, yeah, their squad is too good to go down. Um, obviously they got um, Liveramento Carl Walker-Peters I think they'll be in and around mid-table not a season to get excited about but not a season where they should be stressed about yeah I've got them in my 13th place um, pretty much the same as you I just think the difference between them and Aston Villa for me is the manager I think Ralph Hassan who's all can get a bit more out of his players than Steven Gerrard has shown to be able to do with Villa so far I mean he's done well with Rangers but the Premier League's a whole different ball game We've uh, both got Southampton finishing higher than Aston Villa, so that's an interesting... Yeah. Uh, your 13th place, Roz, and this is a bit of a rogue one. Cause... I've got... Uh, yeah, I, I think a lot of mine could be considered slightly rogue, but what's life without a few random ones, mate? Uh, I've gone Leicester. For me, obviously, at this point in time, they haven't lost James Madison, but I think he might end up going. I think Liverpool... Uh, not Liverpool. I think Newcastle will probably end up getting him. And if they don't recruit someone to replace him with Casper Schmeichel going as well I think they're one or two injuries away from potentially having quite a bad season yeah I mean I, if they can't you know pick up their defensive form and uh, sort out their uh, set pieces conceding yeah, sh- they were shit last year um, set pieces yeah then they could really struggle but you know um, who knows 13th place though that's, that's pretty low for for uh, a Leicester team that's done pretty yeah, well they've in been previous flirting seasons. with European football for Many a season now, four or five seasons. So, thirteenth. Sorry, so, Leicester fans, don't want to do it to you. But for me, I've gone with Brighton in twelfth position. I love what Graham Potter's doing there. Um, I think they've got some great players in Tarek Lamptey, um, what Trossard as well. Yeah. Um, I think they've got a lot of quality in that squad, and I think Graham Potter's a great manager. I, I think Lewis Dunk's yeah, a good nice. centre back. Um, but for me, their issue comes up front. You don't players believe like, in Dav. Well, players like Welbeck and Mope haven't put in the, the goals that we sort of expect of them, uh, especially in a team that creates so many chances. The XG gods, Brighton. Mm. Um, if Rundav can kick on, they could potentially be around that uh, promotion places, but not promotion, the uh, the European places. But if they, I mean, they lose Cucurella, that's a big loss. If yeah. Lamptey can't stay fit, that's another big if. But if Lamptey can stay fit, 
We know what yeah, he can do. It's shit that he's had quite a bad injury record because yeah. he is a phenomenal player. Moda as well is a really uh, good player. Um, yeah. I like watching him. I think they've got a really good squad. I think they've got a fantastic manager. But for me, it's whether or not they have enough goals uh, that they can convert, basically. They can convert the chances into goals. They could potentially be in the European places. However, I don't know if Rindav can do that. I don't even know who's going to be starting for them up front. So uh, it's an interesting season for them. But I mean, it could go, you know, yeah. could, I don't see it going horribly bad. No, but I, I, I could agree. See, I could see them being a, a bit higher on this list. Yeah, maybe where I've put them. But where I've put them is not 12th. I've got Wolves in 12th. I think maybe one of the most uninspiring teams in the league. And I yeah. think 12th pretty much reflects that. I think they... Last year, there was a period of time where they were flirting with European football and then it kind of collapsed quite hard and they finished wherever they finished, like 8th, ninth. But um, for me, I think they haven't reinforced. They know last season that their problems were going forward. They didn't score enough goals. Jimenez wasn't up to scratch. I know Neto's going to be back from injury, but I don't think he can carry that attack on his own. And because their window hasn't been good enough, I think they're going to drop off because I think a lot of teams around them, the last year maybe were below them, I've improved, I've improved more. Yeah. And I think Wolves will fall down the table slightly. I've got Wolves uh, just one place above you in 11th. I think their defensive capabilities will get them results against a few teams that probably won't, uh, they won't be expected to get results against. Yeah. There will always be a horrible place to go to to Molyneux. Uh, to try and get something to break down that Wolves defence. If they can add a few goals in with the likes of Neto being back, uh, even if Troy already gets uh, starting at uh, 11, he, you know what he can do. Uh, not in the final third. I know he's not the most prolific goal scorer, but just his presence on the pitch creates a lot of space. Um, yeah, I think they could be... Uh, well, I've got them at 11th. Um, I don't really see them being in the conversation for Europe. But they'll be there and thereabouts, or just outside, you know? Yeah. Well, I've got... So, this is one of the ones we were talking about was, like, the biggest difference between where I put them, where have you put them. So, you didn't really have much faith in Jesse Marsh's leads. I think they might surprise some people. I know we were saying that they've got a lot of unknown entities, new players in the squad. But I think it's a young, hungry squad with a manager that I think is quite underestimated. And I think they is could... Is that just because he's American? Hey guys, it's your boy Jesse Marsh here. <laughs> I love it when he comes on for like a post-match uh, press conference. It's always good vibes. But um, yeah, no, I think I think there's a good amount of players in that team that I think are definitely up to like mid-table pushing on a little bit higher uh, quality-wise. So I think if he can get them ticking, which I think maybe they'll start a bit slow, but I think they'll become a team that is quite exciting to watch which they always were under Bielsa but in a different way now and yeah I think I think they can give like Wolves and Leicester let's say were f- pretty certain top half teams last couple of seasons but I think Leeds might give them a run for their positions that high in the table yeah yeah I, I, I see I see why you would say that do you think um, obviously the loss of Richard and uh, Richardson, Rafinha and Calvin Phillips it's gonna be hard, massive. But um, but do you think they have enough uh, squad depth in that team to? That's a good question. I think yes, in the sense that so Gelhart's on your contract, like Gelhart a lot, and then Sinistera. Let's say he's coming to re- replace Rafinha directly. I think that's a good like for like swap. And then they lost Calvin Phillips. Well, they've signed Aronson and Tyler Adams in that spot, and they've still got um for sure there as well so I think the depth in the positions they lost the two main men it's the fine. depth there is still good oh fantastic yeah good for Leeds good boys <laughs> um, number 10 in the top half I have finishing the Selhast Selhast this Earth Earth <laughs> Start I've got Patrick Vieira's Crystal Palace yeah nice from why Selhurst Park why have you got them 10th Um, I think they're going to be exciting to watch I think they're going to play some fantastic football I think Eze Elise Zaha are going to have great seasons but probably Eduard as well mm. uh, yeah just super excited for them I think they'll be in the conversation for that conference league spot I think it'll be uh, I think I'm excited for Palace this season I really am I wouldn't be surprised if they did sneak it in sneak it into uh, the European places sneak it in yeah. <laughs> let's go I've got Brighton I think they're going to do well this season. I, I know we're talking about Kukurela leaving and that might be a problem, but they've got, 
I think their depth is actually quite good, and they've made some pretty good signings. Like I said, they've got the likes of Caicedo as well, a good player. I think with Graham Potter, who I think we've said this enough times, he's a very good manager. Probably he should be in the European talk as far as he should be managing a team that gets European football. And yeah, I think Brighton will do well. And yeah, I'd say 10th. As a Brighton fan, you'd be happy with that. Yeah, I think that's a good season. I think uh, any Brighton fan would bite your arm off for that. Yeah. Uh, number nine, I have Leicester, who you had in 13th. That, yeah, I'd say Leicester and Leeds were the two that we kind of had the biggest difference between. Yeah, I yeah. think, do you know what? I think Leicester can keep hold of Madison. And if they keep hold of Tiel- Tielemans as well, uh, oh, yeah, even, even if he's got that, just for the last season of his contract. But what I if think, they lose Tielemans and Madison, though? Then they could fall very far down this list. But I am... Um, we're what we're five days away from the season kicking off, or four days. Yeah. Wait, no, not even that. We're like three days away from the Friday season night. Yeah, off. couple yeah. of days. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm assuming that they're still going to be there. Um, I think they have enough about them to sort of hover around that European place. I don't know. It, it all comes down to whether they can, you know, solidify that defense a bit because that was horrific last season. Yeah. Right. Um. Rosie's ninth place pick who have you got and your eighth place pick we've got very exciting times ahead for Newcastle yeah Newcastle United uh, we both got a very good season ahead for them yeah I think you know I think the first you know up until January might be a bit of a tester for them and then they can see where they can really invest in uh, heavily in January but I think they've got enough about them players like Trippier I think Bruno Gamara she's going to have a great season I don't see why they can't be in that European contention. Yeah, I think a combination of a very understated but effective window, Sven Botman getting target on a full-time uh, deal, linking with Madison, I think they're going about their business right. They're understanding the project that Eddie Howe wants. Eddie Howe's understanding the project that Newcastle are and want. And I think they're going about their business right. And then that, combined with how Eddie Howe got them playing towards the end of last season... I think it's exciting times ahead for Newcastle. Exciting times ahead for Newcastle United. In your eighth place prediction, you Also have... exciting times ahead, but down the country at Crystal Palace. Yeah. I think Patrick Vieira got them playing nice football last year. Took some absolute scalps, the likes of battering Arsenal, battering Tottenham. Didn't lose to City. I think if he can get them playing that kind of football consistently, they've got fit as they. They've got... Chris Richards in the defence, who I think is an outrageously good signing. Decore. Decore. Learning from Patrick Vieira, he's going to become one of the best DMs in the league, I reckon. And going forward, the likes of Eze, Zaha looks on form during pre-season. Elise is going to be a big, big player this Could year. definitely pu- pull up some trees here. Yeah, 100%. And, uh, I think really eight some teams. would be a bloody good season ahead for Palace. Yeah, I'd agree. Um, Seventh place for myself, I've got West Ham United. United? West Ham United. United, I've got David Moyes boys. Um, I think they have improved their squad uh, with the signing of Samaka. I think it gives it something yeah. different up front. I know Antonio goes on these streaks where he just scores goals, goals, goals. But um, I think Samaka could bring some more consistency to their forward line. I think Jared Bowen is unbelievable on his day. I'd like to see Ben Rama be a bit more consistent. I know he had yeah. a really good spell, but uh, I think it's a great team. They hold, uh, they kept hold of uh, Declan Rice as well. So uh, exciting times for West Ham, and I think they'll definitely be in, uh, in the, the contention for the European yeah. places. And uh, I think they're my favourite for uh, that seventh place position. Seventh place for me, and probably the last team that I'll have come from my neck, I've got Man United in seventh. I think they're going to have... I think seventh at the start of a a new project, if you look at it in the grand schemes, probably isn't that bad. But you know what United are like, the Glazers, the fans, they're going to want more than seventh. And the Ronaldo issues. I think they're going going to be disappointed. I think a combination of not enough depth combined with not enough signings at this point in time, I think that coupled with Ten Hag putting a very, very new style on these players. He's already said during uh, pre-season that a lot of the players weren't fit enough, that they've got all work on their fitness to get up to the level that he wants. And I think they're going to struggle at the start. And I think it's going to take them a season or two 
to get to where Ten Hag wants them. He needs a couple more windows. And I think this season's going to be a hard watch for Man United. Um, yeah, I've got them in my uh, sixth place. I think they are better squad-wise than the teams below them in that sort of close contention. Uh, I think they didn't get see the best of those players under Ranić. Yeah. Um, and I think if he can get the most out of players like Rashford Martial. and, and uh, Anthony Martial, yeah. Jadon Sancho, I like the addition of Martinez as well. Uh, if they can get a number six in, I think that'd be really important for them. But yeah, I think if you can get the most out of these players, then there's no reason why they can't finish sixth and potentially even higher. But um, I like what they, I see in preseason as well. I think the, the style of Ten Hogs football is going to really suit some of these players in the team. And um, yeah, yeah, that's pretty six much what I have to say about them. I've got sixth as West Ham. So we've got those two kind of swapped in positions. I've gone for West Ham in sixth, mainly just for the sheer fact that they're a bit more of a, as a squad, a proven Premier League quantity at this point in time. They've been doing it. So they finished, what, seventh last year, but they were competing in the Europa League to the late stages. So for me, these players, they're all a bit more Prem proven than this new squad that's going to be at Man United so yeah I've just got West Ham at slight I think it'll be close but uh, yeah West Ham slightly what we'll do is we'll do our fifth places and then we'll do our fourth places and third places I'm just thinking them first we'll do our yeah ignore that (laughs) (laughs) who have you got in fifth in my fifth place I have Arsenal um incorrect (laughs) I've got Arsenal I think um they've gone about their business and transfer window immaculately. Um, however, I just worry about the leadership on the pitch. I know they've got Zinchenko and Odegaard. It's a young um, team, isn't it? Yeah. Very young team. I know Ramsdale as well is very vocal, Tierney. I just worry that in the games where it's not going their way, uh, do they have enough leadership in terms of like someone like a Jordan Henderson mm. uh, sort of player who can tell everyone to calm down and get them playing their football again. But um, they're really going to tear it up against some teams this year. I wouldn't be surprised if we see some big, big score lines. Uh, I think Gabriel Jesus is going to have an absolute blind of a season. Yeah, I think it's a big season for players like Martinelli and uh, Emil Smith-Rowe as well. We know what Saka can do already. Saka, yeah. I think Odegaard's only going to get better. Um, but yeah, I'm excited for Arsenal. I wouldn't be surprised if they did get that top four. But uh, for me, the team that I have next in my position... Uh, just pips them to the post just due to basically their manager. Uh, and that's who you have in your fifth position. I've gone for Chelsea in fifth. I Do you know when I said May United will probably be the last fan base to come for my neck? Chelsea fans might come for my neck for this one. But I've got you missing out on Champions League football. I think down to the sheer fact that for me, last season, there was like four points between Arsenal, Spurs and Chelsea. So they're already very tight before the window opened. And for me, Spurs and Arsenal have both had a better window than Chelsea and not even by a little bit but I, I think quite understated in the media but I think Spurs and Arsenal have had quite considerably a better window than Chelsea they've both targeted areas that they needed depth and quality in and recruited very well so I'd say them to have had the best windows in the league and I think that will be to the detriment of Chelsea I don't think they'll be able to keep up with Arsenal and Spurs this year and that coupled with the fact that Chelsea always seem to every season or two have this kind of meltdown blip where the manager gets sacked, the players turn on each other, get it out in the media, it all goes a bit sour. And I think that may be on the verge for Chelsea. So yeah, I've got them finishing fifth. Yeah, I've got Chelsea finishing fourth. I just think the difference between them and Arsenal for me is the manager. I think Tuchel has a bit more about him in terms of being able to grind out those hard results and get those points on the board where it's not necessarily going your way um I think the addition of Raheem Stern as well is a fantastic sign I think he's gonna be a really important player for them but um yeah I mean the top sort of uh like third, third basically fourth, through, fifth, yeah yeah even sixth as well for me could literally finish in any position. It really depends. All I'm getting this from is through the preseason and through their transfer window. Yeah. Uh, but it really could go any any way of that, that sort of four-way mix. Um, but yeah, Chelsea for me, just have a little bit more in terms of um, experience, like 
that sort of game know-how than maybe an Arsenal do at the minute. But it's something that Arsenal fans shouldn't worry about too much because I don't think for many of the games they're going to be uh, on the back foot with this exciting new squad. But um, in your fourth place, Roz, yeah, who well, do you have? I've got... So obviously I've kind of given it away that I said Spurs and Arsenal have both had a better window than Chelsea. So for me, they both get Champions League football. But the question is, who do I think finishing higher, Arsenal and Spurs? Well, I've kind of gone heart overhead and I've put Arsenal in third... Spurs in fourth. So I think Arsenal, I think there's, their window is, they're both, uh, like I've said, Arsenal and Spurs have had the best window, but I'd say Arsenal has had just a bit of a better window. The The signings, I think, are at a, just a level above the Spurs signings. I'd say Gabriel Jesus is a better signing than Richarlison. Zinchenko's a better signing than the likes of Perisic or Jed Spence. So for me, I think Arsenal, if they can kick on like they've been playing in pre-season... I think Arsenal will finish third, Spurs fourth. Yeah, I've got Spurs in third, basically down to the Antonio Conte effect. Yeah, uh, I think he really will get the best out of all those Spurs players. No one's going to be able to uh, hide away with uh, mediocre performances, basically. They've got a lot of depth now at the wing-backs, which is super important to his system. I like the sign of Perisic. I think it brings a lot of experience, a lot of uh, workmanship and a lot of game know-how. It's something that um, Conte's worked with before as well. Yeah. So he's a no quantity. I think he's going to have a good attacking output. I think the likes of Harry Kane, obviously he had the whole contract saga um, where he wanted to move away at the beginning of the last season. Yeah, that seems to be done I now, think doesn't it? Yeah. If he can kick on from like how he finished the season yeah. from the beginning, maybe Golden Boot contender against the likes of Haaland and Salah, Son, maybe Gab Jesus, who knows? Oh boy. But yeah, for me, um, I think Spurs are, more, are just a slightly more complete package than Arsenal or Chelsea at the minute. And that's probably down to the system and the manager. Nice one. So we both got Liverpool in second place. Yeah, Liverpool and second place. And the winner place. of third league, Dundee United. Dundee United to finish first in the Premier League. Earth. Nah, we so thought. we both got Liverpool second, City top of the league. Yeah. Um, so the, re- the difference for me here is... Man City are a better squad than Liverpool. Yeah, I think, and for the fact that in the last six years they've won it five times, City know how to win literally 36 games out I of look 38. At, I look they at just... the, the length of the season and I think, right, who's going to slip up more? And it's been so tight the last couple yeah, of seasons. it has, yeah. And I, I can see a game where like Liverpool versus uh, Spurs and Liverpool just could not break down yeah. Spurs at all, like... Uh, they, even games versus like Burnley or whatever yeah. like stuff like that they just really struggle to break down like deep blocks and City have more of the answers for that to yeah. be honest in my opinion but the the sign of Nunez gives them a different sort of approach up front we talked about in the last podcast um, so potentially that's, that is a big sign where if it's not going their way or the system's not working they can't break that deep block then bringing on someone like Nunez who's a bit yeah. more direct who goes through the middle as opposed to playing out wide could be the answer and be pip City to the post in yeah. terms of that I know a lot of people are talking about City getting Haaland and running away with the league I don't think it'll be a I run away I think it's going to be tight up top like it has been in the last few seasons we spoke a lot about the about Liverpool being perceived to be in a period of transition yeah. check out the but, last episode but yeah we spoke about City perhaps being in more of a transition yeah I think there's Liverpool. been too much made of Liverpool's transitional year and not enough made of City's transitional year and everyone's saying the gap's going to be massive I think the gap's going to be tight because of I think we could be looking at another two. last day of the season one pointer kind of thing yeah, yeah. yeah. but That'd it also sick. depends on how far both these teams go in Europe because obviously if one of them as an absolute stinky group stage or gets knocked out in the round of 16, then we're looking at a completely different story where one of them can literally focus on the league. Yeah. The other one can focus on the, uh, or, or, you know, we know City really want that Champions League. So it could be, it's going to be an interesting season. But for me, I do have City pipping them to the post. So do I. I think Haaland is my favourite for, uh, for the golden boot as yep. well. I think Alvarez as well is going to be a great addition to the squad. Um, yeah. And yeah, for me, I mean... He could go either way with a few injury differences. But, yeah, you know, that's true. Uh, if, if Kevin De Bruyne can stay fit, if uh, Phil Foden can keep up his upcoming rise, if Grealish could play a bit more of a role, then, you know, we've got some really exciting uh, battles on our hand. And I yeah. think, you know... I think it'll be tight. I think it's going to be tight between City and Liverpool. It's going to be tight between Spurs, Arsenal, Chelsea. I think it's going to be exciting towards the top of the table. Yeah, And 100%. everywhere else in the table. I think it's going to be a good season. Let us know your predictions. We'll put out a post with our predictions and you can comment 
in the com- comment in the comments. Yeah, we'll, we'll do something where or we'll, comment we'll in wait, the YouTube comments. We'll wait the uh, the finishes and uh, have a punishment for whoever finishes yeah, bottom we'll out that. of us two. And uh, yeah, comment some of your predictions. Let us know if we've had any stinky co- um, predictions. If you're a, say predictions more. If you're a fan of one of the clubs that I've done dirty, come for his neck. Come at me. This is this is an invitation. Actually, don't. I'm quite sensitive. Please don't. <laughs> anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, yeah, follow all uh, all our socials. Get involved in our board draw fantasy league as well. The season's about to kick off. Season's we don't want to be behind. Off, boy. But yeah, thank you so much for watching, guys. Yeah. It's been board draw, and it's live.